calling now, light the fire again. So today the story is about a famous man that nobody knew about. But he's really famous in heaven. I mean extremely famous. He was a street evangelist. He had a certain style of evangelism. Dr. Francis Dixon in England had a service one night and somebody said, I'd like to tell a testimony. Peter got up and said, this is how I was saved. I was in the Royal Navy. I was walking down George Street in Sydney, Australia, and out of nowhere stepped a gentleman and he said to me, excuse me, sir. If you were to die today, where would you spend eternity? The Bible says that it will either be in heaven or in hell. Would you think about that, please? Thank you. God bless you. Then the man left. Now, man, that's tough. And the guy says, wow. You know, he leaves much. He puts a track in his hand. He says, here. And he's off. Just disappears. And the guy says, here's what. I had never been confronted with that question. I couldn't get it out of my mind. I got back to England, and I met someone who took me to a mission, and that's where I became a Christian. So he became a Christian there. And, and he began to live for God. So the man's name is Frank Arthur Bones Jenner. He lived from 1903 to 1977. And at age 12, they put him on a ship because he was, he, he was rebellious. He was anti-authoritarian. He, he goes down to Africa. He, he gets bit by a, a, like a, a mosquito down there. And for the rest of his life, he has narcolepsy. And then he joins the Royal Navy. He deserts the Royal Navy in New York, and he's on the streets in New York. And finally, he joins the American Navy, and he deserts them later. He deserted all these Navy things, and he finally bought his way out of the Navy in Australia. And while he was in the Navy, he had a gambling addiction. He loved craps. And when he, when, he, when he rolled the dice, he had a rabbit's foot in his shirt pocket, and he would rub it at the same time, and he would throw the craps. And that's how he got the name Bones, because that's what came up on the, on the dice. He had a hard time getting saved. Some of you may have had a hard time. It wasn't easy for me, and I eventually gave my life to Jesus. Thank God for people that prayed and were persistent. But in 1937, at a Glanton Open Brothers meeting, he finally got saved. And he, it says that he went up to, uh, they were having a meeting out in the open air. And he went up and he says, I, the guy says, I got good news for everybody about Jesus. And he said, well, I'll give you some good, I'll, I'll listen to your good news if you listen to my good news. And he said, okay, you go ahead. So he pulls out the dice and he starts talking to them about craps. And he starts showing the guys all how to play craps. <laughs> finally, he gets finished. They take him home. They take him home and they talk to him about Jesus. And the guy gets saved. The guy just, Wow. The power of the Holy Spirit comes upon him, and he gives his life to Jesus. He goes home, and he tells his wife, if you don't get saved, you're going to hell. That really didn't do too well back at home. I mean, that was hard for her for a long time. His life of upbringing was tough. I'm a deserter. I'm a sinner, first class. When God saved him, he said, this is amazing. He really felt a whole new change in his life immediately. I mean, it just from day to night. And he told the Lord, he says, I'm so grateful for what you've done for me. He says, I promise for the rest of my life to talk to 10 people a day about Jesus. So he began to do that. He, he'd been a deserter about a lot of things in life, but not on this time. No, I'm not going to desert Jesus. Oh, no, not for what he's done. I feel it on the inside. I don't need to do these things anymore. I have someone greater than me that now lives in me that's perfect. See, when you give your life to Jesus, all of heaven will rejoice. All of heaven will not rejoice when you get healed. It doesn't say that. The Bible does not say that anywhere. The Bible says that when a sinner gets saved, all of heaven has a big party, like a ticker tape parade. And they know your name there when you get saved. So they're thrilled about you. Frank Jenner got saved, and they, they held a party. Frank Jenner got saved finally. Wow. Somebody witnessed to him, and he got saved. So, so life changed for him. He was famous now. All of a sudden, he's in the famous line. Now, here's one of his famous lines. If you died within 24 hours, where would you be in eternity, heaven or hell? It became known as the Frank Jenner question. People began to hear about that, and they went, wow, man, that's kind of, right in your face. It's in your face. It's kind of, it's too much. It's too harsh. It's too hard. One guy tried it, and he got punched in the stomach. He said, I don't think I'll use that method anymore. <laughs> it couldn't happen to you. He decided that he needed a verse in his life, and a verse was, Philippians 4.13. This is a memory verse that you should commit to your life. It says, I can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens me. So he, he kind of replaced the rabbit's foot with a three-by-five note card in his pocket. He'd read that real quick when he'd get ready to go approach somebody and say, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And there he would go after that person. And he, he would just accost people over and over. Let me read to you the Amplified version of that. Now, the Amplified kind of expands Scripture. 
It gets more to the point of some things. Just like the word belief in the Greek, you've got two words there, obedience and acknowledgement. So you've got two words, obey and acknowledge Jesus, so obey Jesus. It says this, I can do all things which he has called me to do. Everybody in here is called. No matter what part of the journey you're on, it doesn't matter. I don't, it doesn't matter if you say, well, I'm having a hard time believing that this guy lived 2,000 years ago and died. I really, you know, I'm struggling with that. Struggle with it. Have fun with it. But if you really want to know, you seek God and he'll show you. I can do all things which he has called me to do through him who strengthens and empowers me to fulfill his purpose. I am self-sufficient in Christ's sufficiency. I am ready for anything and equal to anything through him who infuses me with inner strength and confident peace. Oh, Frank, Frank Jenner had a tough approach, but it's effective. It's extremely effective. He's tough. If he was to witness to you, you might go, I don't like that. A lot of people said that. It's okay. Leonard Ravenhill says, any method of evangelism will work if God is in it. If God is in it, it will work. One man from India says, I was in a very privileged position in India. I was in diplomatic service. It took me to Sydney, Australia. And I was doing some last-minute shopping laden with parcels of toys and clothing for my children walking down George Street. And this courteous little white-haired man stepped out in front of me, offered me a pamphlet, and said, here's what he said to him. Excuse me, sir, are you saved? If you died tonight, are you going to heaven? He says, I thanked him very much, but this disturbed me. I got back to my town. I sought out the Hindu priest, and he couldn't help me. But he gave me some advice. He said, just to satisfy your curious mind. He said, why don't you go see the missionary? So he said, I go to see the missionary, and he leads me to Jesus. And I said, I'm done with Hinduism. I want Jesus. He says, so, you know, I started serving Jesus. He said, and I gave up serving in the diplomatic service. He says, all of a sudden, I'm over the bunch of missionaries. And do you know that we won 100,000 souls to Jesus? Because one man said, excuse me, sir. Yeah, he accosted the people. But you know what? You didn't have to go to a three-week seminar to learn how to witness on his method. You can call this morning Witnessing 101 today. You got it. You get it all right here. You don't have to come back for another meeting. Isn't that good? Come back next Sunday, okay? Now, 100,000 souls. Wouldn't you like to be the guy that won a guy that won 100,000 souls? That goes on your account in heaven. Now you start getting to be kind of famous in heaven. You get a lot of rewards. That's nice, isn't it? How many of you want to have rewards in heaven? Yes. I want as many as I can get. Because if you get there and you don't have any, you're going like, what? And God says, well, you didn't do much. Jesus says, sorry, you didn't do too much down there. Now, Acts 1.8 says on the Amplified Bible, but you will receive power and ability when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you will be my witnesses to tell people about me both in Jerusalem and in Judea and Samaria and even to the ends of the earth. The Holy Spirit makes the difference in this witnessing thing. You can do anything with the power of the Holy Spirit. He, he's simply amazing. And you can be famous with Jesus. You can be famous in your neighborhood. You can be famous in your church. You can be famous in heaven. I think that's a good deal. Famous in heaven. Who cares who's famous here on earth? I want to be with Jesus. I want him to say, that's my man. So this guy, the fires of evangelism are on him. You know, when you're trying to witness for the Lord, you've you, you got to do a lot of things because you have to go do a lot of internal things. And you question things. You, you want to know, is, am I doing it the right way? And the enemy's going to attack you and say, that is a terrible way. I wouldn't witness to anyone like that. Now, Ravenhill says any way works as long as God's in it. So you have to go, whose voice am I hearing? Oh, you know what? And then you believe, well, if they're going to get saved, they're going to get saved. If they're not, that's just too bad. No, it's, it's not bad. I mean, what if that was your brother? What if that was your brother? Don't you want all of your family members to go to heaven? I do. I'm praying for all of them. So the, the fires of evangelism, that's one of the great fires in the Christian church. It begins to burn out the impurities in your life and in your family life. So God's power is made perfect in weakness. So, yeah, when you go out there, you're kind of weak. You're kind of, like, oh, no, i got to speak to somebody. Now, I've had to learn all this from every which way. And, I mean, I've gone out sometimes and I've talked to people. 
And, and I'm, I'm my, leg, my legs are knocking. I, I'm, I'm afraid, too, you know. But I read a story about this guy, and I've gotten over that after many years. And this guy's amazing. Uh, 2 Corinthians 12, 9 in the New International Version says this. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. God's power is made perfect in weakness. So when you're out there weak and worried, say, oh, God, help me. He's going to help you do what you need to do for him. Easy. He's going to help you. He's going to help you share the good news. And you're going to be famous with God. Won't matter about the world. Won't matter about this world. You're going to be famous with God and famous in your church. It's all about God's power. Frank Jenner is famous in heaven because he never deserted his post of soul winning. See, many of us have been called to win souls, but we won't do it. God's called us all to do something. If we all did what God called us to do, this world would be very different today. I promise you. But what we have is a lot of people saying, I'm too afraid to do that. Well, he went after it. Here's another guy that says this, how he got saved. He says, I was on a United States battleship. We were doing exercises in the South Pacific, and we docked in Sydney Harbor for replenishments. We hit King's Cross with a vengeance. I got blind drunk out of my mind. Uh-oh. I got on the wrong bus, got off in George Street. Bad move. Now, who do you think's in charge of that move? The Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit says, my man's on George Street. I'll get him on the wrong bus. So as I got off the bus, I thought it was a ghost. The elderly white-haired man jumped in front of me, pushed a pamphlet into my hands and said, Sailor, are you saved? If you die tonight, are you going to heaven? Now, he's blind drunk. He says, the fear of God hit me immediately. I was shocked sober. Now, that's evangelism and power and weakness, isn't it? And that just shocks this guy. What? And, 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 and I ran back to the battleship, sought out the chaplain. The chaplain led me to Christ, and I soon began to prepare for the ministry under his guidance. And here I am in charge of over 1,000 chaplains, and we're bent on soul winning today. Now he's got 1,000 chaplains under one guy that he won, huh? So 100,000 people over here in India, he's got a, cha a guy over 1,000 chaplains, and they're winning souls. What about that, folks? Is his method okay? You think his method's okay? You think God approves of his method? You think he might be famous in heaven now? You think they might be going, Frank Jenner, look, he's, oh, this guy's wild. Now, here's what the Apostle Paul in Romans 10 and 1 says. Believe me, friends, all I want for Israel is what's best for Israel. Salvation, nothing less. Now, remember, he's a persecutor of Christians at one time. Now he's on the other side. He's been discipled by Jesus. And now he gets the whole big picture. The man was blinded by the world persecuting Christians, and now God blinds him with his light. Jesus, the light of the world. Boom, he can't see. He gets sobered up. You have a choice. Preach for me or stay where you're at. He goes, I'm preaching. I'm preaching. I want it with all my heart and pray to God for it all the time. Pray all the time. Here's the difference. And when you go to do evangelism, you've got to pray, 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 pray. Say, pray, 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 pray for God all the time. I readily admit that the Jews are impressively energetic regarding God, but they are doing everything exactly wrong, backwards. He said, they're not, they don't have it. I'm praying for them all the time, all the time praying for them. They're on my heart all the time. It's there. Frank Jenner would rise up every day at 5 a.m. and pray before he would go out and talk to people. He said, God, lead me to the right people today. Show me who to talk to, God, because the eternal destinies of people are in my hands. Wow. He believed it. He saw it. See, when, you get, when Jesus accepts you, you've got to think back and say, who was the guy that, in, that invested time to witness to me? I, I had a guy like Frank Jenner accost me in my backyard. I was accosted. I was wanting to get out of there and go to do something else that day. And my mom says, uh, Bill Lackey is here today to witness to you. And I went, oh, my goodness. And he comes out with this Bible, you know. And he's got me. And, the, and we, had a, we had this much going by our house, like this kind of traffic. And a post office right next to it. The guy has me down in the yard on my knees. You see this part in the Bible? You believe that? I said, I believe the Bible, but I'm not ready to do this yet, man. And people are walking over and going, 
looking at me and I'm embarrassed, you know. This guy hasn't given up. It's like, it's like Frank Jenner after you, you know. And I'm like, oh, help me, Jesus. I, I wanted to get saved just to get rid of him, you know. But I, uh -uh, I'm not making that statement. Oh, no, no, no. I'm not going to mess with God. So uh, I didn't get saved right there. I held off. It was tough, though. Now, Frank Jenner did not have a clue as to what his impact was. But this one guy, this pastor, Dr. Francis Dixon, Everywhere he would go, somebody would pop up and say, I've got a testimony. And they would start, and they would say, I was down in Sydney on George Street. And this guy accosted me. This ugly old man accosted me with the gospel. I didn't like it. But the Holy Spirit began to move on me, and I got to a place and got saved as soon as I could. So it's the power of the Holy Spirit that comes upon these people. And they, they finally found out where he lived, and they, they went to him. And this is like... He's, in, he's getting near the end of his life, and uh, he's having sickness in his body. And they said, do you know how many people that you impacted? He goes, uh, I don't know about one. I don't know that I helped anybody. They said, oh, you helped a whole lot of people. How, how many do you witness? And they said, 10 a day. He says, and they, they started adding up numbers. They said, well, that's over 100,000 people. He says, yeah. He says, a, a lot of them rejected me. He said some of them were very courteous, and they would take the pamphlet and say, well, thank you very much, and move on. He said, well, let it, we want to tell you some stories. He said, everywhere we go in the world, all around the world, we keep hearing your name. People get, keep standing up in, in these large meetings and say, I was on George Street in Sydney, and that old man accosted me. That's why I'm a Christian today. And they became missionaries. They became pastors. They became heads of missionary organizations. They became head of chaplains' organizations. Families got put back together because one guy was rough and abrasive. They said, well, we think, that we, just, we think that we just discovered the tip of the tip of the tip of the iceberg. We think that there are over 10,000 people that you personally won. But we think that those 10,000 people have also, in another ripple effect, have won hundreds of thousands of people. And they begin to cry. He said, I had no idea. He said, I was just doing, I was just serving Jesus every day of my life. I was grateful that Jesus came and rescued me from my life. And he saved me from me. That was the greatest thing I ever had happen in my life is that Jesus saved me. I was, a, I was a reckless man. I was a hard case. But he saved me. Changed my life. Everything was different. And I've been happy ever since all the day long. So how can I repay my Savior who suffered for me. How could I? He deserves the reward of his suffering. And, 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 and all I could do was, you know, I'm not trained, he says, and I belong to a small church. Very small church, about the size of our church. That's where he worshiped all the years of his life. But he had a worldwide impact. Hundreds of thousands of people went to heaven because of Frank Jenner. Not formally trained by anybody, but by God himself the Holy Spirit, the Lord Jesus. How do you know he's famous in heaven? Say, oh, that's very easy. The Bible says that whenever somebody is saved, that all of heaven rejoices. So the trumpet sounds in heaven, and they said, one more got saved, and then somebody says, let me guess, Frank Jenner witnessed to him. That's right. How many parties have we been to where they've honored Frank Jenner? Oh, it's beyond count now. Yeah, I mean, they're showing up here in heaven. Now, they've had a great ministry. They're showing up here in heaven, and they also had great ministries. This is amazing. Now the party goes off the next day. Ah, and you're right. It's, it's an honor of Frank as he won somebody else on George Street with his brusque way of evangelism. Excuse